All right, hi guys. I am going to walk you through kind of how I reflect on the past year and then use that to set goals for the upcoming year. I think having my goals listed out gave me something to focus on um, when everything was going crazy, um, the things that I could control. So I really believe in the power of goal setting. For me, I am somebody who gets distracted really easily in today's di digital world. So to have those goals to kind of like focus in on every single day and remind myself of what it is I'm working towards is super, super helpful. So I'm just going to launch right in um, and kind of go over how I evaluate how the year went um, and the specific things that I look back on. So I call this like my retro. Um, so a retro is just like a retrospective. So you're just reflecting on how things went over the last couple of months. Um, I use the Cultivate What Matters um, power sheets. And so they kind of have you reflect on things uh, month by month. Um, so I always make sure that I do that every single month. So I have something to look over at the end of the year and I'm not trying to remember back to what happened in January. On the back of one of these pages, they kind of give you like some blank pages. So obviously I have filled this out, but I do what's called a small and great. And every single week I just write down really small things that happened that were really fun. Um, and generally these are things that I wouldn't remember like uh, like a year, a year later or definitely not even like a month or two later. So it's always nice to like go back and read through all the great things that happen because your brain automatically remembers the negative stuff a lot more easily than it'll remember the positive stuff. So I love to go back through and remind myself of all of the fun little things and all the great memories that actually did happen. So I go back month by one month and I look at what were some really good wins? Like, were there projects that I completed to move the needle forward in my business? Um, what were the, some of the challenges that happened that month? And I, like, journal all of this out every single, like, on a month-by-month -month basis. And then I also go through and look at, there's a page at the beginning of this, and it's called your yes and no list. Um, so it's, like, what you're saying yes to for the year, what you're saying no to for the year. Um, and I kind of just, like, go over it, read back over it, and, like, look at, okay, like, what went really well? What do I want to add to my yes or no list for this upcoming year, depending on um, just, like, the wins and challenges from every single month? Um, and then I go, and as I'm, like, reading back through everything, I try to think of, were there any habits that I implemented that worked really well for me? Or is there anything that I really want to try out for the next year and to just incorporate it into my life, whether that's for business or life thing. The next thing that I look through is actually finances, which if you're not a numbers person, this can be really scary, but it's actually really simple. And I think sometimes when we look at numbers, we tend to overcomplicate things. Um, I personally use QuickBooks to categorize and keep track of all the finances for the business um, and on the personal side of things too. So every single year, I kind of just go back and look through the profit and loss of the year as a whole and every single quarter. And from there, I also look at the conversion rates that I have. So that means looking into the number of inquiries that I got during a certain quarter, the number of consults that I booked for those weddings, and the number of weddings or um, portraits that I actually booked during that season, and then calculating the conversion rates for that, as well as the conversion rates on my website to figure out, is there a website page that I need to tweak um, in order to increase those conversions? So, it's really, really simple math, um, it, but it's really helpful to kind of get, like, a very data-driven view of your business and figure out, like, really, like, data-wise, like, what is something that you can improve. And for me, I think my brain always remembers things way worse than they are. And then you look at the numbers and you're like, oh, it was actually okay. Um, so it kind of just keeps me grounded. I try to make sure that I have a plan for increasing my pricing every year. So that kind of just gives me a good idea of comparing that with the past couple years if, if I did successfully increase my prices. Um, and then another thing that I try to look at, I used to be really diligent about tracking my time. I kind of fell off the bandwagon this year, so I want to definitely include that for next year. Um, but usually I will look at um, what are the different streams of revenue that I have in my business. So I kind of look at all three streams of revenue, total out per um, type and to see like which ones are the most profitable and which ones are taking up the most time in my business. So when I first started out, I was doing all sorts of photography, like event photography, portrait photography of all sorts, like seniors, um, 
families a little bit. Like I was taking anything and everything um, and weddings. And for me to look at all the streams of my revenue, it kind of just showed me that the bulk of my revenue was coming from weddings and seniors. So it gave me like a clear, um, just like way forward to niche down to those two. And then the last thing that I look at in terms of numbers is the expenses for the business. So what did I invest in over the last year? Um, what month to month expenses do I have? Um, this year I actually hired a VA. Her name is Sarah. I love working with her. So at the end of the year, I kind of look over all the expenses and I look at okay, like, is there anything that I need to cut? Is there anything that I want to add? What do I want to budget for like a long term really big pro or really big investment, like a group coaching program or um, just uh, like hiring a, an editor for your photos, maybe, um, whatever that is. But that way you have a clear idea of your expenses on a year and a month to month by basis. Um, the next thing that I look at is like a little bit of a process. So Caveat like this does take me a couple of days. It's not something that I like crank out in one day because that would be a lot of like digging into all the numbers and stuff and evaluating and thinking. Um, I generally take like three to five days, I would say. I do this generally um, right before Christmas, but I go through and I look at my calendar. I look at, okay, how many weddings did I have a month? How many shoots did I take on a month? Did I stick to my boundaries in terms of my shooting schedule because I personally tend to burn out if I shoot too much in a really short amount of time. Um, so I kind of look at like how well I did that for that and then I look ahead to next year's calendar. So generally by this time I already have a bunch of weddings kind of like on the books and so I kind of look and make sure that those are blocked off properly in my calendar. Um, I go in and block off any like days that I personally want to take. Um, or traveling, or just to take them off <laughs> for some mental health days, um, or any like birthdays that I need to make a note of, and I'll go through and write them in my planner. I also write a note to make sure I like get a gift if it's like a family member's birthday or something like that. Um, and then after I have that all set in place, then I kind of look at the months and quarters as a whole and try to figure out where my marketing launches are gonna go. So a marketing launch is just generally like a period of time where you're going to market a specific service um, more heavily. I started doing this last year and I think it brings a lot of clarity to what you're doing in every single season of your business. Um, I learned this from Ashlyn Wrights and she has a course called Prime to Launch and it kind of walks you through like all the logistics of doing this. So if you're interested in that, definitely check her course out. Um, but I kind of also, when I'm looking at the marketing side of things, kind of just go over the analytics again, numbers, for um, website analytics and social analytics. So I am mostly using Instagram and um, Pinterest to market my business currently. So I kind of look over the analytics, look over the top content and see what performed well, um, maybe what didn't perform as well so I can use that info and make sure that I'm creating content that's really engaging for my followers um, in the next year. So I use Planoli and Planoli lets you track analytics on Instagram um, over an extended period of time. So that's how I get that analytical information. Um, and then I use Google Analytics for my website to be able to track all the numbers. Um, as a part of my monthly workflow, I actually do go in and track numbers for Instagram and my website. So instead of having to like dig through a year's worth of data, I can just go back to my Google Excel spreadsheet and like look over the numbers there and then analytically look at it from a bird's eye view instead of like getting lost in the numbers. From there, I look over, okay, like based off of what did well um, for this year, like Reels was a new feature and the engagement on Reels is a lot higher than it is on feed posts. So something that I'm looking at for 2021 is tweaking my marketing posting schedule. I kind of go through and look at like, okay, like what content needs to go out on what date um, and then create a new posting schedule that me and my virtual assistant can work off of in Asana. We, that's where we keep track of that. Um, so that's a little bit on the marketing side of things. So moving into goals for the business, I really tend to stick to the power sheet system um, to kind of think through goals for not just my business, but also my life. So they have uh, what they call prep work. So it's a ton of different pages at the beginning. Um, it really just like allows you to reflect on, this is like um, what fires me up, just like reflect on who you are as a person, what it is that lights you up, kind of like what you want to make time and space for to do more of, to do less of, and like here it has 
what they call the cultivated life evaluation. So you kind of just can like brainstorm and brain dump on specific areas of your life. Um, so I go through all of this prep work at the beginning of the year. There's a couple of pages. There's a step where you go back, read everything and highlight what they call threads um, and then encourage you to make goals out of those threads that you see as a recurring theme from what you wrote. Um, so again, this process takes a couple of days. I don't crank it out all at once because I like to take my time and like really reflect on everything. Some of the goal setting is kind of determined for the business in terms of the finances and the client spots that I'm looking to hit. But I also think through, okay, like, are there any dream projects or anything that I want to introduce into the business that I have had the idea for a little while and I'm like, okay, this is the year to make it happen and kind of think of like, okay, like, what are things that I want to focus on in each quarter? Um, I used to do what is one project that I want to work on every single month to move the business forward. Um, and that was really, really helpful for me in the first year of business. Um, but in the second year of business and now going into my third, I like having a little bit more flexibility. Um, and especially to like change if things come up or things don't work out as planned. 2020 was like the biggest lesson in that. Goal setting on an annual basis really keys me into what I want to internally, like what is going to fulfill me in the long run and what I'm really excited and passionate about. So I try to focus in on that. Again, like my quarterly business goals are really, really flexible. Um, and I let myself kind of like pull things that I'm really excited about if I want to. But I always use my annual goals as kind of my like North Star and my compass to go off of. Um, the last two things that I want to hit on are that every single year I go through and kind of like clear out the digital clutter. So I recently got rid of a ton of extra files on my computer that were just like dead files and taking up space and I feel so much better. Um, and then usually I also go through and will print out a book of all my like iPhone pictures from the year of like memories or if we traveled and took pictures on my camera and stuff like that, I compile them all into one book. And then I also try to make sure I go through and declutter my home a little bit. Obviously, um, a pro tip that I've learned is to clean everything out before you put your Christmas decor in so that you're not adding to the existing stuff. Afterwards, I also make sure when I'm like taking all of my Christmas stuff down that I also go and do a little bit of a declutter of my home and especially my office space and make sure that it's like fresh and inspiring and allows me to be creative on the daily. So if you guys have any questions on my annual goal setting, please feel free to drop them down in the comment below. If you're not already subscribed, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you get notifications every single time there's a new video. But thanks so much for watching the video and can't wait to catch you guys in the next one.